Okay, we're back. And what I want to do is pick up on the uh, on the venting. We're on page. Those of you who have a book book out, uh, go to one uh, seventy five. Now this is on vent terminals, about maybe a third of the way, quarter way down the page. And we did the vent terminal, the definition. It's just the opening into the atmosphere. And the extension above the roof, 18 to 24, done that. And now they mention uh, parking lots, gardens, observation deck. This is usually in a, the bigger cities, but you might bump into it in a, even a city like Florida. I never did, but uh, maybe some of you guys have. And it says here that you have to go eight feet above that walkway. Now, we're not talking about a regular roof. This is something where people normally would be walking around safely. You probably would have a, a wall all the way around, and it would be suitable for the public to go up there. If that's the case, this 18 to 24 doesn't fly. So you got to go eight feet above the roof. And I think I, I know I mentioned to you that story where an inspector asked me that question specifically in person at the uh, – uh, practical portion of my plumbing exam, which we used to have two parts. We had written and we had the practical, and uh, he gave me a break on it. Anyway, uh, by asking me how tall a basket, I think I told you that. I think it was Wilt Chamberlain. I thought about it later. It was a big, big name player 40, 45, 50 years ago. And he was seven feet, and he said, add one, eight feet. He says, you got it. Okay. Uh, and one thing I didn't mention about that is that when you go eight feet high, you would have to have like, guide wires going down almost like a, a tower, like a one of those transmission uh, towers, like electrical towers. They sometimes have wires coming down, cables to support it. Now, that wouldn't be anything we would normally get involved with. That probably would be all engineered. A building that would have this situation would probably be big enough to have some pretty exact specifications. So that probably wouldn't be a concern, and they don't mention it. So leave that alone. Uh, they do mention that you can't fly a flag off there. Uh, flag pulling prohibited. All right, so no American flags, no political flags, no nothing. Nobody flies a flag off the off the, the eight foot extension. Also, the uh, they mentioned waterproof flashing. This is the only place I remember in the book that it, they mention it, and it's only one sentence. And what they're saying is that it's your responsibility to make the pipe waterproof, not the carpenter. Okay. Now, one uh, if it's an asphalt shingle roof or fiberglass shingle, uh, those are easy. Unless it's a very steep roof, you should be able to do that yourself. Guys in the last few classes have told me that they use a thing called a cozy collar. Some of you are familiar with it. And uh, I understand it's something you can install from the inside, inside of the roof. And it kind of pinches everything, nice watertight, a little expensive but it, it allows you to stay safely inside the building. You don't have to crawl up on the roof and risk getting hurt sliding off the roof. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Now, if you have a wood roof, I guess the cozy collar could work on that. I don't recall talking about it with my classes, but if it works on the asphalt shingle, which are very thin shingles, maybe they have a version that works on wood. I am not sure. But I do know this from doing many wood roofs. They are difficult to do. If you can get out of it, I hate to use the word weasel out of it, but that's what you want to do. You don't want to do a wood roof if you don't have to. You want to uh, tell the contractor, uh, you know, I can drill the hole, I can put the pipe out, I'll leave it loose so it can come out if you want to uh, flash it, and I'll, I'll glue it later. Uh, you can tell them the last one I did leaked, uh, some story like that. You don't really want to do a wood roof. It, uh, it can get slick. Um, and it's very hard to lift those, unlike the asphalt shingles. They're very hard to lift. You need a tool that uh, the carpenters have, and uh, it almost looks like a ceiling iron for cast iron. It has a flat hook that goes up and grabs the shingle nails and pulls them out so you can slide your flashing up. It is not easy. Even with experience, it is a tough job. Like I said, if the cozy collar works on it, it's definitely the way to go. Okay, but in any case... The point is, the book says it's your responsibility. Now, there's one other exception. This I ran into. Oops, where's my book here? I ran into this maybe, oh, it was probably in the late 80s. I was already teaching school, so I was doing it part-time. But it was a commercial building, and it was a rubber roof. Now, going back into the 60s when I was a kid, in the early 70s when I worked as an apprentice, guys were still doing uh, asphalt roof with stone. And I don't know if they're still doing that. 
but uh, they were very messy and uh, very heavy. Uh, it was a uh, we stayed we stayed away from that. I don't remember putting pipe through those roofs. I really can't remember it. But on the rubber roof, which is everybody's using these days, I've had uh, that particular roof. I remember the contractor telling me, cut you know neatly cut a hole, put your pipe through there. We'll flash it. Right. And they have their own way of doing it. Now, you guys that have done rubber roofs, I'm sure that's what you've run into. And I know I've talked to classes uh, in the last over the years, and that's the way it's done. So even though that you technically are responsible for making it watertight, um, the guys doing the rubber roof will insist on putting their own little f uh, rubber flashing type thing on it uh, to keep it from leaking. And it's nothing that we really want to get involved with. So let them do it. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, they mentioned about increasing the vent uh, no less than one foot below the, below the roof surface. We did that. Flag pulling, we did. Location of the vent terminal. Okay, in other words, the opening for a vent. It can't be below a door, a window, or other opening uh, unless you are. Let's draw this one. Because this one does pop up. I remember doing private homes, especially if they put an addition on the house. I lost my favorite marker. Here we go. Let's say you had a house, and they're going to put an addition on And there's a window upstairs like this, right? We're looking at it from the side. And you want to put a vent here because this addition is going to include a family room with a little half bath. All right. And your pipe is going to stick out like this, this being the roof. This is the second floor. Okay, the vent terminal would be right there. Okay, if this is 10 feet, or more, okay. All right, that's what it says here, 10 feet away. All right, now if you are, if you're less than 10 feet, so if I move this pipe to the left, I got a problem. I got a, an inspector who's on the ball uh, from experience, I know because I was an inspector for seven or eight years, and I could I could see stuff. I, mean, I was a building inspector also. You can see this stuff. I mean, you, you get a pretty good eye after a while. Also in the cellar, you're looking at the pitcher pipe. It starts over here, goes 25 feet, 24 feet, six inches of pitch, and you see maybe three. That's eighth inch pitch. We got a problem. So we can we can as inspectors we can see a lot of this stuff. So. A foot, maybe let it go. But you're, you're coming over here, five or six feet, and you got a window? Not happening. And the reason is because sewer gas could go up and into the house when the window's open. All right? Ten feet, they feel, is safe. Yes, I know if the wind is blowing this way, it could uh, go in. But I guess they figure by that time, by within ten feet, after ten feet, it's diluted enough. It's not going to be a big deal. All right? Now, another one where you got to be careful is if you got a skylight in the kitchen. I ran into that particular one that I just drew a number of times. And this other one would be, uh, let's look at a roof. This would be roof on a house, too steep a roof. Okay, let's give it a little less pitch. Okay, let's say I have a skylight. An opening skylight, not a fixed skylight. A fixed skylight doesn't matter, but an opening skylight that would like kick up from the bottom right here, and the top of it's right here. I would have to have a vent, not, it could be just above it, like I'm showing it here, as long as it was two feet from here to here. In other words, two feet above the opening skylight to the vent terminal, the vent terminal being the top of the vent, like that. Okay? 
Now, if this vent was like at the same height, no problem, but I'd have to be 10 feet one side or the other. Now you're going to say, well, when the hell are you going to put a, a vent out the roof in the kitchen? If that kitchen has a vaulted ceiling, in other words, the ceiling follows the rafters, like if I did a cutaway, the rafters would look something like this here. Um, I'm going to have a lot of choice. I can't go up and down like this to get my vent back here. You have to stick the vent out the front. It's the way it goes. If this is the front of the house, where the kitchen usually is. So once in a while, not a great deal, not, a, not often, but occasionally, I remember having to do something like this and paying attention to this two feet. Because if you can imagine, you know, you get done drilling rafters, you know, I have to probably drill a little bit. And all of a sudden, you're too close and the inspector calls you on it. And now you're going to start drilling more holes. You're not going to make any friends with the carpenters. They're going to have to come and clean up after you by sistering up any kind of uh, floor joist or rafters because you drilled extra holes in them. Okay, so here's your two feet above, right? And the other was 10 feet away. Uh, another one, another, I don't know how often it's asked, but I imagine it's occasionally pops up on the exam because it certainly pops up out in the trade. Okay, let's move on. Let's see. 10 feet. And they mentioned that vent terminal shall be located no less than 25 feet from all fresh air intakes. All right, so fresh air intake, where you're actually taking in fresh air into the house, uh, you should be 25 feet away. Now, I'm wondering if that, I guess that would apply to fan in the can. You know, that, uh, that fan that you have in the boiler room where you don't have enough uh, makeup air and the fan kicks on when you boil, just before your boiler kicks on, it kicks off right after it kick, it, the boiler turns off. Uh, so that's fresh air coming in. Uh, that's a little more strict. You got to be 25 feet away horizontally uh, from a fresh air intake. I have not personally run into, run into that, but it's here it is, and which means it's fair game for a test. And right after that was the two feet above and 10 feet away. We did that. Okay, now vent extensions outside the building. This is very, very tricky. Now, I've heard this through the grapevine. And if any of you uh, know any more about this, please let me know because uh, I am in this situation myself. I just finished fixing up my basement with a permit. Uh, I did the carpentry work. I did not do any of the wiring. I had it done professionally, had it inspected, and uh, had it done professionally and then had it inspected. And I had a mason do a false wall um, in the basement uh, just for show. But the rest of the work I did. But what I'd like to do is to put a bathroom in down there. The drain's easy. Just put a sewage ejector up and into the uh, the building drain, you know, going out to the septic. It's not a hard job. It's just a lot of work. Anybody who's done one knows what it is. Jack hammer the floor, put your can in, your drains, and uh, away you go. But where do you put the vent? I don't have a vent stack. Um, I'd have to run a vent up through the house. But the reason I'm saying this is, look at this paragraph right here. I'll read it. Vent extensions outside the building. The first sentence says, all soil waste or vent pipe extensions shall in be installed inside the building. I'm going to highlight my own. Inside the building. They hate you to go outside the building. Okay. Now, for remodeling and alteration work only, in other words, it's already there, what are you, like my house. What are you going to do? Vents may be installed outside the building with, big one here, highlight it, underline it, circle it in red like I did, with prior permission of the inspector. Now, I highlighted this and underlined it long before I put it in this bathroom. I mean, excuse me, I didn't get to the bathroom. Long before I did the other work. The area for the bathroom right now, I'm about to put shelves in, which would kind of kill the bathroom, but I haven't done the shelves yet. All right, you have to do it with the prior permission from the inspector, local inspector, not the state, and when all other means of venting have been eliminated or are not practical. Okay, so what's your alternatives? One, you can drill a pipe right through the house. It's going to look like some kind of bean pole going up through the house. 
I have done it in a number of houses, and some of you guys might have done it. You guys too probably have, where you run it through, try to line up closets, and you get very creative trying to sneak it down walls. It's very, very difficult. And you're running two-inch pipe. It should be. It's not easy. That's almost two and a half inch diameter. Uh, a lot, a lot of trouble. Now, let's say you look at it with the inspector after you've already checked it out, and there is nowhere else to go. You're screwed. You're not going to run the beam pole. And he's not going to let you do drum traps, not going to let you do automatic vents, which we're going to get to. So what do you do? You could run the vent outside the house. I have only seen this once. It was a house down in Tiverton. And it was just at the blizzard of 78. So it was 1978. Galvanized pipe came out of the side of the house from the basement. Two inch. It ran strapped to the house. like It looked just like a downspout up and right through the uh, the jet. It was an old house, so it had a lot of overhang, and right up onto the roof. So from the roof, it looked like a regular vent. But if you look close, it runs right down the outside of the house. It's the only outside vent I've ever seen. And uh, they are not common. But I did hear a story about an inspector, a local inspector, who I don't know. I don't even want to mention the town, uh, who made a big commotion about this. The plumber called him on it. It went to Boston on appeal. That's where, where things go. If you don't, if you want to uh, mix it up with the local inspector, you know you want to pursue it. Just like in a regular court system, you can appeal a decision. His decision, you appeal to the next level, which is the state, which is final. That might as well be the Supreme Court. And I believe they ruled in favor of the plumber. Now, the problem with the outcome, and you should be aware of this, and I think some of you guys have been around a while are, are familiar you might win that, like they say you might win that battle but you lost the war because the next time you come into that town somebody's going to be looking for you to make a mistake uh, again your call if it's going to cost you a lot of money for the inspector to uh, enforce something that's technically wrong uh, you can pursue it especially in a town where you don't really care to go back anyway uh, so this is a tough one and i'm debating whether or not what to do about it myself uh, I don't think I'm going to just try to sneak, and I don't blame. I don't. And I don't suggest. Remember, if you do, anytime you guys are doing side work, keep this in mind. We all do side work. Anybody who said he didn't do side work in his younger days is probably lying. Uh, you get no insurance, right? Um, you get nothing covering you. You're working without a license. Um, you you cannot take people to court because you're doing work illegally. Um, it's like a bookie. Try and take you to court because you stiffed them, your own money. You're out of luck. So uh, always be careful. Also, you're all liable. You're an adult. You're all 18 or older. So if uh, you torch a place, you light it up, or you flood it out, you're on the hook for big bucks. Okay, let's leave that one alone. Um, it's funny. I'm, I have a star here. I got it underlined, highlighted, and I had no idea that this was going to affect, you know, this house at some point, because this just came about in the last maybe six months. Okay, vent grades and connections. Let's see how we're doing for time. Damn. Oh, this vent thing's taking a little longer than I planned, but I want to I want to cover it carefully because the venting is one thing that separates us from the uh, weekend warriors, the, the ham and eggers, backyard plumbers, or whatever you want to call them. They get a can of glue and some, a hacksaw and they're off to the races. And uh, and these days they don't even have to know how to use a torch. They can use the uh, CPVC. So this here is like all foreign to anybody who is not in the trade. And uh, we really have to know it. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is to... Uh, end right here put a date and uh, we'll start on on Wednesday okay that's it I will see you back in class and uh, get your uh, notes out from that chapter that you did last week I think it was 17 that long chapter and we'll go over the answers